Hey, it's John. Welcome back to my channel. Now, I know I said this was going to be a three-part series on the California High-Speed Rail initial operating segment construction, but I decided to do the opposite of the High-Speed Rail Authority and split Construction Package 2-3 into two videos. Construction Package 2-3 is approximately 65 miles long, so well over twice as long as Construction Package 4, and I had well over two hours of drone footage alone to cram into this video, so I decided two shorter videos would be easier for everyone to digest. So here we go. We start where CP4 ended, which is one mile north of the Tulare Kern County line, and where this section of cleared right away begins is the start of CP23. I'm sure this section of the alignment will be a raised embankment as we saw before, but it looks like they haven't moved much soil here. So I did shoot about 75% of the CP23 alignment with my drone, but there are a couple of gaps. Between here and Avenue 56 is very remote, and there weren't even any public roads that I could drive on to access this portion of the corridor. So we'll pick back up at Avenue 56, but along the way I passed a BNSF Geometry test car on the Bakersfield subdivision that parallels California Highway 43. Here you can see the high speed rail alignment approaching from the south, and you can clearly see the outline of the future Avenue 56 grade separation that will be built. Now this area is obviously a water retention structure, but I don't know if it's for flood control or just a water storage area. Off to the right is California Highway 43, which the high-speed rail tracks parallel for several miles. That railroad track we're about to cross over is a former Santa Fe branch line that is now known as the West Isle Line, and it's privately owned and operated by Nutrien. The line is about five and a quarter miles long and serves a large ag facility at Alpog, California. Along the length of CP23, there are at least four areas where solar panels are being removed to make way for high-speed rail. Currently, California produces more solar electricity than they use, so it's likely that removal of some of these solar installations won't have much of an effect on the overall generating portfolio. Even before construction of high-speed rail began, you can see that access to a lot of these county roads has been severed. Ignore my flying here, as you'll see up ahead, the high-speed rail alignment parallels the BNSF tracks. And here we have our first active grade separation project, which will carry Avenue 88 over Highway 43, BNSF, and the high-speed rail tracks.
And here's what it looks like from the highway. So here is the beginning of another gap in the drone footage, but as you can see in the distance, there doesn't appear to be much work on this section yet. So for the next 7 miles, let's talk a little more about Construction Package 2-3. The contract was signed in June of 2015 with the joint venture of Dragados Construction and Flatiron West. There are approximately 36 grade separations on this project, all of which you'll see in these two videos. Because of the large amount of precast concrete needed for this project, the contractor decided to build their own precast concrete production facility in Hanford, which we'll see in part two of this video. We're now passing through the virtual ghost town of Angiola, and I hope I'm pronouncing that right. The grain elevator is still in use and serves the nearby dairies. As with my CP4 video, there are in fact blue skies in the background, but the video appears cloudy because of the haze in the air which is a combination of wildfire smoke and airborne dirt from the dry fields. Off to the left you can just make out a dairy with a pretty interesting backstory. It's actually for sale if you want to buy it, because the former owner apparently had quite a problem with gambling and methamphetamine use. And because of this he defaulted on more than $160 million in debt, so a bankruptcy court turned the dairy and another one that he owns in Oregon over to a trustee to find a buyer. So I just thought that was a little bit interesting. As we approach Avenue 144, you can see construction activity again as crews are beginning to work on a massive viaduct and pergola structure to carry high-speed trains over our river, the BNSF tracks, Highway 43, and Avenue 144. In just a moment we'll be back to the drone footage so you can get a scope of the size of the project, but for now you can see the elevated right away off to the right. So way in the background is that dairy we passed, and as we turn to the north, you can see just how large this viaduct will be. Incidentally, directly behind the drone right now is Corcoran State Prison, which is a huge and infamous prison, but as drones and prisons don't really mix, I figured I wouldn't film it. As we head further north, we pass over more and more irrigation canals that high-speed rail will cross over.
Here at Whitley Avenue, you can see some of the initial work has been done for the grade separation. And I'm guessing that Avenue 4.5 will be rerouted to the east of the high speed rail tracks. Off to the left is the actual town of Corcoran, and you can see here that dirt has been graded to raise the alignment. Here's quite a complicated intersection with three roads and two canals that I assume high speed rail tracks will pass over. It appears here that a viaduct will be built over Avenue 5.5 and, and Niles Avenue will be rerouted to the east. So here's another break in the drone footage that I really wish I had recorded, but even with six different batteries charging simultaneously, each battery lasts a little over 20 minutes, so I had to film sections that wouldn't put me at risk of flying too far away, and this next section wasn't very easy to film. Regardless, as the right of way exits Corcoran, it again parallels Highway 43, and as you can see off to the right, more solar panels are being removed. and the high-speed rail tracks will cross over at this point. And here we are at Lansing Avenue. There will be a grade separation built here, but work has not yet begun. And here we are turning north to the Kansas Avenue grade separation. In the distance is the Kansas Avenue grade separation that's nearing completion, and here we are at the Kent Avenue grade separation, which is substantially complete. And here again we'll cross Highway 43.
Here you can see a canal crossing that's actually complete. At this point we join a high voltage transmission corridor, which the tracks follow through Hanford. And to wrap up this video, here's the Idaho Avenue grade separation. Thank you so much for watching and please subscribe to see part two of this tour and I will see you all soon.